Hi everybody, I hope that you are well and having a wonderful weekend. Um, so today's podcast has been, well it was going to be one of two things and now I don't actually know what it's going to be. So bear with me <laughs> um, because I, like I've had a really reflective week. Um, it's obviously also been extremely hot, which I think puts us um it can like if we don't sleep well we get tired um and for me that brings when i'm tired it brings up all sorts of emotions um so this week is going to be a i want to speak about taking responsibility for your life um so we we could go in a few different directions with this because i've had an interesting week and I think that there's a lot can be learned from it. So I, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Rosanna. I am the host of the Design Your Legacy podcast. Um, I started this podcast 18 months ago now and I really want to use it as a medium to help normal everyday people live a life that they are completely, truly and utterly in love with. Um, which is why actually taking responsibility, taking responsibility for your own life is a huge part of that and a huge part of living your most fulfilled life um, and your absolute very best life, whatever that is for you. Um, so we're kind of, and when I say taking responsibility, I don't mean like controlling every aspect of your life. I just mean taking responsibility for the experience that you have because we can't control everything. We can't control what the weather's going to do. We can't control whether it's gonna be 35 degrees in London or not. And then the next day, you hope it's going to plummet to 19 degrees, um, but it doesn't and it rains and it's, you know, the whole, we don't control the weather. Um, and I know so many people who let their moods be, um, determined by the weather oh it's raining oh bless my grandparents are two of those people so you know we we can't control everything but we can control how we are about a situation so this week I was approached to ask uh, approached to speak about um kind of the loss that I went through with cancer and speak about the grief around it. And I was I was really touched to have been asked to speak about this um, because, you know, somebody has watched my journey, been inspired by it and wanted me to share my journey to help inspire others. Now, I struggled because, and we had a conversation about this, me and the lady who asked me to speak, because I actually don't perceive what I went through as a loss. Um, I perceive what I went through as giving me a second chance of living the life that I absolutely want to live, um, which I wasn't doing before cancer. So um, technically, I lost a lot. Um, I lost my hair. I lost, and I, I, that's like the most obvious thing, isn't it? It's like, oh, you lost your hair. I technically lost my breasts, but even then I have, I had implants put in, so I still have breasts, just not breast tissue. Um, the wonders of, uh, <laughs> of medicine. So, you know, I technically lost my breasts, I technically lost my hair, technically I lost two toenails to chemotherapy, um, I lost um, my strength, I lost a lot of my strength um, physically, obviously going through physical surgery, but also chemotherapy is poison in your body, which makes you lose a lot of blood cells and all of these or it kind of weakens your immune system physically you lose a lot um now it's just never really crossed my mind to 
perceive any of this as a loss. Um, I actually, you know, and I find myself in quite a fortunate position. I've been doing mindset and personal development work for a few years, so I already knew how I was going to tackle this and how I was going to get through cancer and I knew that I wasn't going to have myself a pity party but I know that not everybody is that fortunate and also not everybody is um I had uh everybody's journey is different and you know that is totally out of our control I didn't give myself cancer I had we found cancer and I had to then tackle it. Um, so I couldn't control that, but what I could control was how I was going to approach it. So thankfully, because I took control of my life a few years ago, not took, I took responsibility for my life a few years ago, I am trying to improve myself, improve my mindset, because what we know is that our um, outer world reflects our inner world. We are electromagnetic beings and energetic beings and we attract energy that is like the energy and frequency that we put out. So if I was to put out, going through my cancer treatment, if I was to put out an energy of, oh my God, I'm gonna lose my breasts. Oh my God, I'm losing my hair. The hair thing was really hard, but to flip it, um, but I still managed. Um, or, oh my goodness, I'm losing all of this. That would then have put out an energy that kind of reflected, that would have been reflected back to me and I could have lost more. It also strikes me that, and I never, this never once crossed my mind whilst I was on the journey until I kind of made it, but I'll get to that. I could have lost my life. If this hadn't have been found, if I hadn't had the awareness of my body, if I hadn't had the connection to my body and the intuition to go to the doctor and have this painful lump in my breast looked at, then I could have lost a whole lot more than my boobs. Um, and, but that never really, that thought never crossed my mind. I could have played in that. I could have, I could have, gone through the journey from that perspective and then my journey would have been completely different oh my goodness i could lose my life i could lose my life and then you know what i might have lost my life and again i appreciate everybody's cancer journey is totally different and we cannot control it but we can take responsibility so and we can take responsibility in any area of our lives we be that health wealth, like our happiness, just the food that we eat, the exercise that we do. If you don't like running, don't run. If yoga makes you cringe, don't do yoga. Like you could, there are so many, like I ran for years. I, I did love running. I loved the competition of it. Now I don't love running, so I don't do it. Um, not as much. I'm actually going to go for a run tomorrow and I'm really looking forward to it because I don't put the pressure on myself anymore. Um, so I've, again, taken the responsibility to change my view on running, um, knowing that I will probably never run a marathon again. And that thought thrills me. <laughs> um, so how our lives pan out can is a result of the responsibility that we take for our lives. So um, I've also had been, somebody reached out to me today to ask my, um, was I given any medication after the treatment? And, um, and again, it was like, I had to kind of explain everybody's journey is different, but we can take responsibility. And if you don't feel that this certain thing or way of dealing with something is right for you, you can address that and you can change it. Taking, 
it's really difficult to take responsibility if it's a if it's a chronic health thing because we see the doctors as the people with the in, they're the people with the trick they're the people they're going to heal me these doctors know a lot more than i do these doctors they're going to fix me um they're the only people that can fix me these doctors the 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 men and women in white coats they are the people who are going to save my life i don't have to do anything i just have to turn up to each appointment and let them do everything um it's really easy to give your power away and do that and let um somebody else take responsibility for your health and your life no 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 we do not that is not how we're going to heal anything any area of our, ever there any area of our lives is not going to be healed by giving our power away by taking responsibility we choose to take our power back we choose to stand in our power we choose to em like embrace our power in my last episode i explained how you are powerful beyond measure and understanding that is one of the first keys to falling in love with yourself you understand that you are powerful beyond measure you will understand that if you have face a challenge you will know that actually you know what is best for you so what was best for me in my cancer journey was to work alongside my medical team and my doctors because i knew that i wouldn't be able to do it on my own um i did half joke because i really didn't really fancy chemotherapy but um it wasn't something i really wanted to do every week but i knew that if i there were two ways i could look at it i could look at it as though the chemotherapy was going to make me ill make me miserable um and just hide under the duvet for five months or i could work alongside the chemotherapy and do things that help make me feel better and um i did things like reiki i still went to yoga uh, well when i could physically i wasn't able to all the time um i still chose to eat healthily again when i could there were days when all i could eat was marmite on toast um but i um i chose to see the chemotherapy as it was helping me so i in that way reclaimed my power and didn't give all my power away to this this fluid that they're injecting into my body that we are so told and we know it as being a toxin um and a carcinogenic i ironically so um so yes it's very easy to give our power away to the men in white coats or to anybody in an or in, in a position of authority when we're facing a challenge but actually if we can learn to follow our intuition um we are taking our power back and by us taking our power back that is reflected in the results we're shown in the world so if we can stand in our power and um I knew when chemotherapy had been enough for me. I knew when I'd done enough. I knew when I didn't need to do any more. I was supposed to have an extra six weeks of chemotherapy and I decided not to have that. This worked out in my favor because I knew in my body that the cancer had gone. I knew that I was okay and I knew that the next step was surgery and that was gonna be the end for me and it was. And I knew that without a doubt in my body. Um, it was at this point when I was deciding to stop when I did have to go really deep I did have to ask myself lots of questions about you know what if I am wrong which our intuition very rarely is in fact it never is um, but we can misinterpret like an intuitive um, an intuitive decision or an egoic decision like a, a decision based from fear or a decision based from love like they can often get mixed up in our minds if we're not used to listening to ourselves so i did have to question what if i'm wrong and what if this isn't like what if 
I make the wrong decision and then, you know, potentially again, I could lose my life early because at the end of the day, we're all going to die. Um, that's a given. Nobody makes it out of this world alive. But, um, but you know, it would, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to die, but I did have to come up. I did have to ask myself those questions of what if I'm wrong and am I okay with it if I am wrong and again I listened to my body and I listened to my intuition and I found I made the right decision for me this is all part of taking responsibility responsibility so I could very easily have given like kept on going with chemotherapy and I would have kept on I would have been given it for another six weeks and then you know I didn't need it and I could see the toll that the chemo was having on my body and when I think about the loss that I experienced actually the loss of there there are elements of yes I lost my identity a little bit yes I lost with the hair stuff um, and yes I lost a lot of my strength and who um, who I thought I was so the person that I thought I was but what that gave me in losing that I didn't and this is why I say I don't think I lost anything but it was a I in losing this I say in uh, quote unquote losing um, what I gained was an opportunity to choose who actually I wanted to become and I thought I'd been, well, I had been taking responsibility of my life for years before, but I thought I was doing the right thing by myself and actually I wasn't. I was doing the thing to stop myself from, I was doing things to stop myself failing rather than doing things that actually I really wanted to do. So going through this experience for me wasn't a loss at the end of the day when it's all over um it was a massive gaining of a second chance of life a second chance to live a life that i that i design that i love that i want to live no i can't control everything that's going to happen in my life i can't control um how um, quote unquote successful I'm going to be. I can't control how um, uh, my body is going to heal from this. But what I can do is I can work with my body and I can work with my intuition and I can work with the power that I have to influence how I feel feel and how I get through um, any challenge, any obstacle, any day um, by taking responsibility and choosing my thoughts, choosing um, what, choosing what I um, input into my life, into my body, into my mind and um, choosing the thoughts that then kind of output um, and it's those thoughts that go out that actually um, they then kind of transmit the frequency and that then attracts back to us um, the matching frequency which then kind of is really cool because that then um, determines what is brought to you in this life um, which is loads of fun to play around with I've been playing with it um, well been trying to play with it for years but I've been trying to control and realizing that you can't control it it's not like you cannot control this life but you can work with it and you can play with it and um and I've been playing with it especially this week um and I've seen some really incredible things happen it's been so much fun um but yeah so like I by myself taking responsibility on how I perceive this um, cancer journey I and you know and this can be transferred to 
my business, it can be transferred to my relationships, it can be transferred to my friendships, like, well, when I say relationships, I mean overall relationships. Um, another example, in fact, what made this click a little bit in my mind was I had a bit of a revelation this week or maybe last week that um, I've been really pissed off with somebody and that's not like me, I don't really get angry at people, um, but I've been really pissed off with somebody who I thought shouldn't have dealt with something the way that they did. Um, it's a person that I was close to and then all of a sudden I wasn't and they I was telling myself that this person obviously doesn't care, they obviously are not um, who I thought they were, they haven't checked that I'm okay, don't they know that I had cancer and then they completely never spoke to me, like we were close and then all of a sudden we weren't close and they never check in on me, they never check that I'm okay, they've never checked that um, like uh, like how my health is, they never check da 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 da, they just completely dropped me, left me, boo fucking who, let's have a little pity party and be angry at this person. Now it's taken me a while to understand why I've been angry at this person and in actuality I'm not angry at them, I'm ang I've been angry at myself. Um, Generally, when we feel something about somebody else, we feel that about ourselves. It's all part of um, kind of like projecting our emotions. So this is why it's really helpful, as I explained last week, to do the deep inner work and these things will come to you and you will understand and then you can move on. You can love it and move on. So I, um, so it just like clicked in my mind. Oh, actually, I'm angry at myself. I'm not angry at them. Oh, actually, it's not their responsibility to check that I'm okay. It doesn't matter. It's actually got nothing to do with them. It's all down to me. And so th this revelation actually then started me really checking in with myself this week and being like, am I okay? What do I need? What do I need this week? Um, again, especially off the back of the self-love podcast last week, um, this is so important and a huge part of taking responsibility for our, for our own lives. I was trying to put the responsibility of whether I was okay or not onto somebody who I've now not really spoken to for six months and, and that's okay. And that doesn't matter. It's how I deal with it that matters because it's me that has to live with it. It's me that has to live with these thoughts in my mind and it's me that has to live with the outcome. So am I okay with that? Am I okay with the thoughts in my mind? Um, am I okay with this? And it turns out, no, I wasn't okay with being angry. I wasn't okay that every time this person popped into my mind, I was angry at them because that's, because A, that means I'm angry at myself, but it's just not an emotion or a feeling that I want to feel. It's not something I want to put out into the world. I, one thing, another thing that I have gained on my cancer journey is a deeper connection to myself, but a deeper connection to like love and to, true actual love the love that t a year two years ago would make me want to vomit but it's like this i just i want to feel love i don't want to feel anger and me being angry at somebody for something that's not even anything to do with them it's all to do with me you know that's not that just doesn't sit well with me anymore so i take i i'm taking responsibility and i'm changing that and i am approaching it in a different way and any time so also we actually can't re we can't control the thoughts that come into our mind but we can control um how we kind of deal with them we can change them so we can have a thought which you know it's it's kind of subconscious coming conscious and we don't we can't control what comes up like we can't really control our dreams so what we can do is the thought comes into our mind and we can flip it. So flipping a thought is a great way to change it. And eventually, 
like your that will seep into your subconscious mind and you suddenly and when you get it you get it and you won't have like I've not had thoughts of anger at, about this person um all week and I'm really proud of that so another kind of example of how we can take responsibility um yes so sorry I've had to journal on this because I knew what I wanted to speak about and as I mentioned at the beginning it was always I didn't know where I was going to go with this because it's like I've been feeling really deep and reflective all week and I knew well there was I was playing with two ideas for this um for this week and I've gone with taking responsibility because it just feels so right um and that and you know another way we can take responsibility is by taking responsibility for like um the achievements or the like where we want to take our life if you're not in a career if you're in a career that you're unhappy with you can take responsibility and change your career you can take responsibility and leave a relationship you can take responsibility and eat something differently you can take responsibility and not go out drinking when it's 35 degrees and you're going to be dehydrated anyway and it's going to make the hangover 10 times worse and I'm so proud of myself because I didn't do that yesterday whereas two years ago I totally would have done a year ago six months ago I totally would have done and I didn't I'm really proud of myself <laughs> although I'm still feeling the effects of the heat so um but I can't control that what I can control is is how I deal with it um so yeah so I, I think that's kind of um it and I was also so the other part of the loss conversation was grief um and it's it was loss and grief so of course there are moments that I face grief um again not something that I can control but I am responsible for how I deal with that grief I can repress it um or I can allow it to come and allow it to ebb and flow and allow the emotions to come and allow them to leave and allow them to be and face that with such compassion and that's I'm much better at it now I'm kind of at the other end um and it's all easy to say this while you're not going through it um I I mean I remember when I started losing my hair and and that really was really 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 hard and that was probably the first time I ever felt true grief um other than um like losing my nana um but I felt true grief because it was when I started to realize that I was going to change and that oh shit this is actually happening um but from there I chose to see it as a shedding of the old and embracing the new so yes I might lose my hair yes I might lose my breasts but what I'm coming out of this as is a butterfly and I am this kind of um, metaphor has been the case throughout the whole journey was I'm facing this challenge I'm going through this I was a caterpillar I'm, go I'm now in the chrysalis turning to mush that was the cancer the treatment the losing the hair the, the surgery the kind of rebuilding and now I'm on the other side I'm on the butterfly side my coach said that to me the other day and it just made my heart absolutely sing I'm on the butterfly side um, and that's how I chose to see um, even before I truly understood it I chose to see the the losing the hair the losing the breasts was just all a part of my transformation and all a part of my awakening and I'm so actually really grateful that I went through all of that um, I just I am really really grateful that I went through that I'm really grateful that I felt those things that I experienced everything I'm grateful for every single way I went through my journey um, I wouldn't change a thing 
I wouldn't even go back and not have cancer um, because I learned so much but I um, you know and if I wasn't taking responsibility then I could just feel sorry for myself that I had cancer and I could feel sorry for myself and I could keep living how I was before and then I'd probably get ill again in one way or another. Now I know that this has been very focused on my cancer journey um, but I do believe that you can transform transfer these lessons into anything in any area of your life. Um, I think before we look and blame outside of ourselves, we take that thing that we're blaming outside of ourselves and we put it on ourselves, kind of try it on ourselves, turn it on ourselves and if, and and where can we improve in that? I mentioned Byron Katie's work a few weeks ago, um, like you kind of, here's the situation, you look at the situation, you rant about the situation and then you flip it and you turn it onto its opposite and see how that true, how that, how true that is for you, how that works for you and it can really help you with this like deep in inquiry into yourself um, and how you actually feel about something. When you know how you actually feel about something you can then start to take responsibility to how you flip it and how you change it and how you improve your life. I really hope that this has helped you realise how you can take more responsibility in your life to live your best life possible. Um, it is one of taking responsibility for anything. Having the awareness and taking responsibility is is like how you're gonna see change in your life, no matter what, a, what area of your life that is in, if it's in finances, if it's in a relationship, or if it's in uh, your health, um, like the three main areas of your life. If you can start to take responsibility for how you're being and what you're putting out into the world, you will, th and, and changing that, you know, you can take responsibility and blame yourself. I really wouldn't advise that. That's really toxic. Um, so you can, like, there's no blame here. There's just taking responsibility and choosing to change it. And then you'll start to see magic and you'll start to see um, changes. You'll feel better. You'll be lighter. You'll be happier. You'll make more healthy choices for your mind, body and spirit and you'll just start to see your life changing and that is, I can tell you from experience, that is just truly magical and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So maybe a little challenge for you then is notice an area of your life that you're not feeling too great about um, and whatever that is, it'll be different for everybody understand that you can't control that you can't control this challenge that you're having but what you can do is you can take responsibility you can see if there's something that you need to change you can see that if there's something that you need to flip and understand whether it's actually true or not you can um uh, yes yeah, so, and then take responsibility and make the change and and observe it over the next week or two and just see what like changes are reflected back at you. Um, it's when we start to take responsibility for our own lives, we reclaim our power, we take our power back, that's reflected to the universe, the universe starts to um, give that back to us, it gives us, it gives us opportunities to um, to stand in our power, it gives us more power um, and it's truly, truly a magical way to live. Like, we are powerful beyond measure. Nobody, you're not told that as a two year old, but we are. We are so, so powerful and we don't get out of life alive. We don't get out of this life alive. So do you want to live your life being a victim or do you want to live your life as a powerful, powerful being who has full responsibility for their lives and and sees magic. Like, I know which life I want to live um, and 
again if you're watching this I think you do too so go take responsibility and love your life and watch life love you back um, and you will just see how magical it is so thank you very much for listening. Um, I have a group coaching call on the 2nd of July, Saturday, the 2nd of July at 10.30 a.m. Um, it is a great way, if you're facing a particular challenge and maybe you're not quite sure how to face it, how to change it, how to do whatever, um, and it can be in any area of your life then this is an opportunity and an invite for you to bring it to the group it's a very intimate group of no more than five people so that um, I can give full attention to your challenge and we will just kind of well I will coach you through it um, and hopefully you'll have um, your solution or an area to kind of work on some and some kind of tips to kind of get yourself through it by the end of it and it, each person kind of gets about 20 minutes um, and it's an affordable way to learn more about coaching to be coached through a particular obstacle or challenge um, the your to kind of save your spot is only 50 quid um, so it's in my opinion can be really really useful if you're going through a challenge or something but also I will have if you have a question for the next questions from the heart podcast episode um, which will be the following week please drop it to me on Instagram and I will do my very best to answer it for you and hopefully give you some insight and wisdom based on my own past experiences so from my heart to yours i love you thank you very much for listening or for watching if you found this helpful please do share join me in the group coaching connect with me on instagram um, enjoy your sunday and have a wonderful week ahead